In this video, I will explain with an example how to prove that a function has a limit directly from the definition of limit. For the first example, I have chosen a particularly simple function so I can focus on the structure of the proof. This is the problem. I want to prove that the limit as x approaches 3 of 2x plus 1 is 7 and I want to do it directly from the definition of limit. So let's begin by recalling that definition of limit. I need to show that for every positive epsilon there exists a positive delta such that if the distance between x and 3 is between 0 and delta, then the distance between 2x plus 1 and 7 is smaller than epsilon. Since this is what I want to show, before I do anything, let me look at it piece by piece to figure out what the proof should look like, what the structure of the proof is. First, I need to prove that for every positive epsilon, something. So I will begin the proof by fixing an arbitrary value of epsilon positive arbitrary because I need this proof to work for all values of epsilon, so I don't get to choose epsilon, I cannot put any constraints on it. Second, I need to show that there exists a delta with a certain property. The easiest way to do this is to say what I am taking as delta. And since I first fixed epsilon, I can now take delta depending on epsilon. The order matters a lot. First fix epsilon, second take delta as a function of epsilon. If I am not careful with this, it won't be clear what is arbitrary and what I am choosing as a function of what, and I may end up writing some pseudo-proof that is not actually a proof. And then I need to prove an implication. So I will assume the if bar, I fix a generic real number, and I assume the distance between x and 3 is between 0 and delta, and after doing some math, hopefully I can conclude that the distance between 2x plus 1 and 7 is smaller than epsilon. And that should be the structure of the proof. There are extra things to write, particularly between step 3 and 4. The most difficult point is to figure out what delta is. So let's do some rough work to try to come up with it. For now, I'm going to look only at the implication. I want to enter the proof by concluding something about the absolute value of 2x plus 1 minus 7. I'll begin with a bit of algebra. That's the same as the absolute value of 2x minus 6, and if I take two common factor, that's 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3. In the middle of my proof, I'm going to be assuming that the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than delta, so 2 times it will be less than 2 delta. And now look at what happens. I want to prove that the left-hand side is less than epsilon, and I have here that it is less than 2 delta. So if I take 2 delta to be epsilon, or delta to be epsilon over 2, it will work. And this is okay, because I am allowed to choose delta as a function of epsilon. So choosing delta as epsilon over 2 is legal. Notice that this is not the only value of delta that works. I could also pick anything smaller, as long as it's positive, and it could also work. And in many other proofs, it's going to be important to keep track of things like this and to use them. But in this proof is not necessary, so I'm just going to keep delta as epsilon over 2 for simplicity. Everything I have done so far wasn't a proof. I haven't even started the proof yet. What I was doing was the rough work I needed to figure out how the proof goes. But now that I've done that, I'm ready. Let's write the actual proof in order. As we said, first I fix an arbitrary value of epsilon. Let epsilon be greater than 0. And then I'm going to take delta to be epsilon over 2. How do I know this? Because of the rough work I did before. Then I fix a generic value of x, real number, and I assume that the distance between x and 3 is between 0 and delta. And then the absolute value of 2x plus 1 minus 7, I copy the algebra from before, is going to be equal to 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3. By my assumption, this is smaller than 2 delta, and by my choice of delta, this is epsilon. And look at that, I have proven that the distance between 2x plus 1 and 7 is smaller than epsilon as needed. That's it, that completes the proof. In the next video, I will present a second example of a proof of the same type, but for a much more complicated function. The structure of the proof will be exactly the same, but the math we need to do between the steps will be more complex. And specifically, finding the right value of delta as a function of epsilon will take much more work.